Hello, hello, beautiful, blessed people. How are you today? Hope all is well. If not, sending so much love your way. It's your Zen Wellness Mama here, and I will be joined fairly shortly um, by my, I guess you could say co-host today, <laughs> um, Carolyn and I just see she just popped in and we'll be I hope you all are ready we'll be chatting for some tea and tarot and right now hopefully <laughs> hey hey hello long time no see <laughs> I know <laughs> We just got off another call. Ladies yeah, we That's just got here. off another call. How is your heart today? Oh, I was going to say, I see that you are funny. Um, my heart today, I think, um, is processing a lot. Um, just with finishing my time here in Ireland, I'm going back to the States. Yeah, tell us um, where you are. Where in the world um, are you? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm currently right now I'm in Port Leach, Ireland. It's about an hour um from Dublin. I'm doing my clinical training with the Irish School of Urban Medicine. Hello everyone who's joining. Hello, um, join me. And I'm heading back on Friday. And so it's I've been here for a month and it has been a lot of processing um, of my coming back to my ancestral home and also to be processing that, integrating that, and then also to be seeing all of the legislations and things that have been being passed in the U.S. and watching everything from abroad and having yeah. <laughs> many feelings of... Ooh, I didn't even think about that. that. Yeah, yeah. not here. Yeah, yeah, and having so, conversations. Yeah, and it's different. I'm really into like it's different watching it from yeah. the outside. Yeah, instead of being there physically, but yeah. then talking to other people and due to how it has been impacting all of us um, mm -hmm. in different ways, because it's not just Roe versus Wade; it's also all of the rights to privacy. And for sure so many layers yeah so many layers and then it's also like the difference like more access to guns um, yeah. as well as the Miranda rights as well for and sure. it seems like there's more things being passed and so yeah it's like my heart feels so many different things and at the same time yeah I feel like it's still grounding in the moment and the new moon as well grounding in the moment in the new moon thank you so much for sharing that with me i think that's oh, going yeah. to be my intro for all interactions <laughs> is how is your heart <laughs> how is your heart christine mm, thank you for asking my heart is happy to see you yes Happy, <laughs> happy to be in community with everybody that's joining. Hello, hello. Um, but of course, um, a lot of mental chatter going on. Um, a lot of big emotions going on right now. But I have to say in this current moment, my heart is just super happy to show up and to be in community with you and with everybody else that is here so that we can provide a grounding moment and um, a moment just to, to ourselves, just to recalibrate and um, kind of just see, you know, just talk it out. I know we have a lot of air in our charts. So mm -hmm. for me, um, I, I heal a lot through just talking it out and being in community. And so I'm happy to do that with you here and with everybody here. And so our intention, thank you everybody for joining. Or if you're watching the replay, hey, um, we decided to bring back tea and tarot um, during this time because of everything that's going on. Um, a little bit of what Carolyn talked about and um, what I talked about, we really felt like there 
and we 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 wanted to do T and Tarot. We we knew that there was something there with T and Tarot, but something said now's the time. Usually we might have to wait a couple of lunar cycles, but we decided to do it and this is our time. So our intention for this space and we are creating a sacred space here. I I've already set my intention and protected this space so that anything that is for our highest good and the highest good of all can enter and anything that is not will we denounce strongly and leave. So if you are here for that, we will start off for a tea and tarot meditation, or tea and tarot, um, for our tea and tarot, we will start off with a tea meditation by Carolyn. And I had the pleasure of joining a tea and drumming ceremony yesterday with Linda. So if you all are interested in that, make sure you check out next, are you having one next month? Yep. Next one. month. In Carolyn's um, bio, um, Acknowledge Wellness, and um, highly recommend, highly recommend, is so grounded, and I'm so happy that I get to do this with you back to back. So we will start off with a tea meditation, just kind of talk a little bit about what's going on um, in the climate, maybe talk about the new moon and the astro weather, and then we'll pull some cards and see what spirit has for us. And I know they're already speaking, so I'm excited uh, to see what comes out. So. Um, I will let you take it away. Wonderful. Thank you, Christine. And it's nice to do this again. And I want to thank everyone that's here, as well as anyone who watches the replay. You know that you can come back to this whenever you want. And I do do, yeah, monthly um, drumming and tea meditation with Linda. Um, and we're doing this here as well as the community. Um, so I invite you, if you have tea with you, or if you have a glass of water or coffee or any drink that you have, if you don't have um, anything in front of you, you can always visualize um, what I'm saying through my words as well. Um, and when you're ready, um, I just invite you to Sit. You can sit down or lay down, whatever feels comfortable for you. And I invite you to bring the cup of tea um, right in front of your gaze so you're looking at the tea. And so we're just going to do a short meditation today, just visualizing the, the tea. Um, so as you're looking at the tea, and also focus on your breath and ground into the soul. And as you're breathing, just notice that you're feeling in your body. And honor anything that comes up. And with your breath, I invite you to continue your gaze at the tea and just thank the tea that you have for being with you today. You feel cold. You can name the herbs that you have or the coffee or the tea in your mind's eye. With me, I have chamomile, linden, and passion flower. I'm just thinking the tea for any messages that it may send to you during this meditation. And when you're ready, I invite you to close your eyes and imagine the environment that your tea or hers grew in. Was it in the desert? Was it in a rainy climate? 
Do you live in the mountains? By the river? By the sea? Or in the forest? And just imagining what it took for the herbs to grow in that climate from seed to harvest. What elements did it take for it to grow? Honoring the sun the clouds, the rain, the soil, the wind, and from imagining its environment and the elements that it took to grow. Imagine the people that were tending to these herbs. And the amount of time and energy it took for them to take care of them. And with imagining the people, you can further imagine how it took to harvest them, how they harvested them with care. And from the harvesting, I invite you to imagine where those herbs went from the harvest, from the people picking them, to your doorstep. Did you buy them at a grocery store? farmer's market directly from the farmer or did you pick them yourself or did you order them online how did it feel receiving those herbs in your home from receiving those herbs in your home? How did it feel making the tea that was right in front of you in the cup that you're holding? I'm just taking a few breaths here. When you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes and bring your gaze back the cup of tea that's in front of you. And with this gaze, I invite you to thank the herb for showing you its life process from seed to growth to harvest to be with you today and the climate that it took for it to grow to be with you today. And just honoring any messages that they may have shared with you. And when you're ready, I invite you to take a sip of tea in gratitude towards what it has shown you. And just noticing how it travels from your mouth into your stomach and further integrating with you in this moment. And when you're ready, I invite you to come back into the space. as we pass, <laughs> pass the mic to 
interesting. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That was so nourishing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What tea are you drinking? You know, it's my new favorite in the <laughs> season. Um, acknowledge wellness. I support tea um, with lilac honey. Also, um, a recipe from Acknowledge Wellness. So, and I actually have a couple of um, lilac flowers in here, and I love that. And they were and they were speaking to me. What were they saying? They were reminding me of who I am and the power that I have within me. It was so interesting um, the way that the I have a see-through glass and the reflection from the glass in the, I don't know, is it mist, fog? What do you do? What do you call this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, from when in looking in the reflection, it looks like a crown. It looks like a crown in my in my cup. And at the bottom of the cup are, are all of the lilacs. And so it was just reminding me, again, of my power, that I'm a queen, that I'm a king. And... Um, yeah, just reminding me of my power. Um, and I love that. That's what they were saying to me, giving me confidence. <laughs> That's beautiful. <sighs> well, thank you again, for everybody, for joining us. I We forgot to introduce ourselves in the beginning. So do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Um, just in case we have other people tuning in um, or newbies tuning in. Sure, you can do that. Um, so, hello everyone again. Um, my name is Carolyn. Um, I go by she, her, her pronouns, and I am a Chinese medicine practitioner, um, and I primarily focus on herbalism and offering tea meditation for others. Beautiful, beautiful. And I am Christine. I am the Zen Wellness Mama in my Zen Wellness space. And um, I do a lot of things. Um, (laughs) I'm a mother. I am um, a wife. I have a full-time investor, which is my nine to five currently on my lunch break right now. Um, And I am the Zen Wellness Mama, and I really feel like as the Zen Wellness Mama in my Zen Wellness space, I'm here to provide um, encouragement, love, support, and tools um, such as human design, astrology, tarot, to help encourage and empower you to start your intuitive wellness journey um, and to maintain it. So that's really um, what I do. And I share some of the modalities, my favorite modalities, which are um, tarot, human design, astrology, numerology, all of the things, all the spiritual things. (laughs) All the things. And you're really amazing at it, too. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So, yeah, let's talk about it. How was the new moon for you? Are you having a new moon hangover? (laughs) (laughs) For me, it has felt very nourishing. Mm. Um, I I've been using that word a lot. <laughs> yeah, um, this one in particular has felt very nourishing and kind of I've been feeling like I need to rest a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I guess the word nourishment has kind of come up a lot. Yeah, days as well because the season. Yeah, it's the season because I know and I had come to Ireland, I had come during the last new moon and so now I'm transitioning to leaving at this new moon and it seems like it's been like a full cycle that has happened. Yeah, it seems like, I guess, the best word would be nourishment. Yeah, yeah. How is it so much for you? Oh, for me... It's definitely been nourishing. Nourishing is a word that I've been using a lot. And nourishment, how can I be of a nourishment to my community? Because Mm. Venus is currently in Cancer right now in um, my 11th house of community friends and, um, you know, just like family and, and things and clients and things like that. So really thinking about how do I nourish, how do I show up and nourish my community at this time? And um, so that's really 
has been what's been coming up for me. And I feel like my spiritual team is really pushing me towards that <laughs> and um, kind of challenging me and empowering me to step into um, being the Zen Wellness Mama that I know I, I have always been. And I can't just claim it. I got to I got to do it. So that's kind of what's been coming up for me to show up in those communities and um, share the medicine that I have. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what's been illuminating or not illuminating, but in a way, right? <laughs> illuminating for me. So um, yeah, and I just think, and yeah, cancer season, cancer is the mother um, of the zodiac. Cancer rules the breast, which are nourishing. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, we provide so much nourishment with our breasts, not only to our children, but sometimes our partners or um, other people as well. So I just um, I just really think that in the season, being all that's come up and all that has been going on. I feel like we're being really asked to figure out how can we nourish ourselves? What communities do we need to be in to make sure that we're nourished? Um, are we aligning ourselves with people that are checking up on us and making sure that um, they give us the nourishment we need or um, moving away from people that are kind of depleting some of the nourishments or just taking, taking, taking. And um, so that's for me what cancer season um, has been really trying to teach us um, with everything that's been going on in cancer season. Um, I know Black Moon Lilith with this recent new moon has, it's not a planet, it's not, um, a star is just a point in the sky. And the story of Lilith, I think, is just so interesting. It's it's very close to this new moon. So it's, um, I can actually pull up um, my notes. You know, I have notes. <laughs> my, awesome. my notes. Um, so Black Moon Lilith is in Cancer right now. And Li do you know the story of Black Moon Lilith? Or Lilith? A little bit, but it would be wonderful if you shared more because always like writing <laughs> yeah there's so many stories about her story so i would love to hear yours but mm -hmm. the story that i've recently heard about um, black moon lilith is that she was the first partner of adam so we know the story mm -hmm. of adam and eve and mm -hmm. she was the first partner of adam but she was kind of outcast because she wanted to kind of stand in her power. And Adam felt like she should be submissive. And so she was outcast from that. And so Black Moon Lilith and where your Black Moon Lilith is really there to kind of show you where you need to step in your power to kind of go against the norm and um, rebel a little bit. Um, to step into your power and to know your worthiness story because she was worthy enough to step into her power just because she was a woman doesn't mean that she wasn't but um so with black moon lilith and cancer it's really telling us no matter like w with everything that's going on right now for me this is how i'm interpreting it we have the power to nurture ourselves to show up for ourselves, how we need to show up and to show up for other people, how we feel is nourishing, not only for them, but for ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. If I'm in a space where I don't feel like I can provide nourishment, that doesn't do anybody any good if I try to nourish you and try to give you, you know, we talk about this analogy all the time, from an empty cup, what's that gonna give you? That doesn't provide you nourishment. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of, and I think, being that Black Moon Lilith is kind of like that rebel and going her own way and stepping into her power, just taking my power back and knowing that I can rebel or I can have an act of resistance in a way that doesn't seem um, like society, that doesn't seem right by society. You know, it, it might not, I might not be, you know, charging the streets or, you know, protesting different ways or, you know, out on social media, but I'm doing my own things and knowing that that's okay. And um, for me, knowing that it's okay for me to create my own form of justice, um, mm -hmm. 
no matter who cares what that looks like or what that seems on the outside, as long as I know that I'm doing that for myself, um, that's okay. And I've been struggling a lot with that because everybody's been so vocal um, about what's been going on here in the States and reclaiming my power and knowing that I'm doing what I need to do to make sure that justice is served. Um, it's kind of what's been coming up for me too around the new moon and cancer energy too. Mm. Oh, what, what story did you hear about Black Moon, Lola? Similar to yours too. Um, kind of just the story of like the outcast mm -hmm. and those that, it almost kind of reminds me of just like those that are ostracized yeah. and marginalized. Um, and even with what has happened with legislation, it's, it's always, my mind is always going to like who is going to be the most impacted Oof. or who is going to be the most marginalized in these cases because even yes like I work as a healthcare worker yeah and um you were a social I, worker or still are a social worker right yeah oh um, if you don't mind me um interjecting yeah. I thought it was so interesting um my friend she works at a hotel in DC and they were um all of the, not all, but a lot of the social workers, they were gathered together for a conference like the National Social Workers Conference when this news came out. And just think, I just think about all of those that are, will be impacted, <laughs> the social workers, right? Because they're the ones. So I just thought about that, sorry. But. Yeah, no, no, definitely. I mean, it's also just like, yeah, who is going to be the most impacted? But then, like, also with what you're saying, too, is that I feel like liberation or how we, re like, rebel or what that looks like, I think sometimes it what is shown is that it needs to be so much outward. Yeah. Um, yeah. And mm -hmm. there is a place for that. Mm -hmm. And there's also almost like a quiet rebellion yeah. that can also just be really powerful in and of itself because when we're grounded in our values and what we're needing and we're also grounded with that with each other, then that also is a really strong force um, that can't fully be broken because you're rooted and you keep going back to yourself sure. as well as your power, but then you're not, then you're leaning into your community yeah. around you or that also could be nationally, internationally as well. And that type of connection can really bring so much together and bring so much nourishment because you're bringing what you're needing and leading into mm -hmm. what you need as nourishment. Mm -hmm. And then other people can provide that same for you. Mm -hmm. And because even I realize too, like, or like people who are disabled. Yeah. Um, the disabled folks, like, they might not necessarily be able to protest or do all of these things. Absolutely. And they, there's other ways of even thinking about myself when I haven't been able to um, go out and do things because of my own health condition. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's just kind of honoring what shows up for us, but knowing that we're worthy of all of those things. Mm -hmm. And when we focus on knowing our worth and knowing mm -hmm. that that cannot be taken away from you. Oh, it's so. Because, yeah. So that's what it kind of seems like with the transformation of Black Moon like Yeah. The, the shadow and then like honoring the parts and wounds of ourselves and knowing that we're still worthy. Yes. We and are can't be broken either of like knowing that like yes there have been these wounds and everyone is going to experience them differently depending on our life experiences and also your human design so, how you're yeah, defined <laughs> and yeah like also like how we identify and yep, the way all of our identities may marginalize us mm -hmm. and, um, and knowing that those wounds are honored and that maybe the wounds that have showed us that we might not be worthy, but also knowing that we're still worthy, kind of like holding the duality of both. Ooh, one of my favorite words. 
Yeah. <laughs> the duality of both. The duality of both. Yes. When you were speaking, thank you so much for sharing. When you were speaking, what came up to me was the Haitian Revolution. <laughs> how they were rooted and how nobody knew it was coming, right? But it was one of the biggest revolutions of our time. Mm -hmm. And they were able yeah. to, um, you know, get freedom for themselves. They did it in quiet. They did it in um, community. They called in other religions, other um, islands, you know, um, other cultures um, for this particular rebellion. And they were rooted and they knew what they deserved and they fought for that. Another thing that um, popped up for me is, uh, I'll read it, it's a, um, it's a, it's a quote from the grandmama's baby. She has a cartomancy um, deck um, and I bought the guidebook and I, she's coming out with a new set of cards soon. Um, and they're like, cartomancy is like playing cards. Um, but I was at the beach this morning, one of our favorite spots. And um, I forgot my deck and I always try to take a deck with me to the beach. And I, but I had playing cards in my car. So I was like, okay, let me just take the playing cards. And I took the playing cards and the theme of my deck was again, spirit reminding me of my power um, was the king of spades. And the king of the spades in um, playing cards, cards um, represents um, swords. So king of swords, you could say. So again, just owning my power. I knew that it was going to come here and speak today. Um, but also, I'll just read a little bit as a snippet of what was in that guidebook, because I think it speaks to what you were talking about. Um, and it's prioritizing pleasure is a revolution. Um, at and I think, I, and there's more to that, but I just want to pause there for a second. Prioritizing pleasure is a revolution. Being that there's so much to be angry about, there's so much to be mad about, but prioritizing pleasure is also a revolution. You look up the NAP ministry, she speaks about that all the yeah. time, right? Just resting and kind of, and I, and I feel that like this moment, like with under the cancer moon, like cancer, Mama wants to take care of us, wants us to rest, to relax. Like the card from my Moonology deck um, is relax, new moon in cancer, relax. But it's hard to relax when the world, when you're, when we're, in, we're right in the middle of a tower moment, <laughs> yeah. when the world is literally crashing around us. This is the, tar the, the tower card in my African-American um, tarot deck. Like we're drowning. Our houses are burning down. There's so much coming out. How can we prioritize pleasure? Prioritizing pleasure is a revolution. After generations of sacrifice and policing of Black bodies, Black culture, and Black joy, go on and live your best life. So we can think about, I know that's what, something that I think about all the time. I think about all the time is I'm very blessed. And that's why I say hello, blessed people, because I really feel that even just to be born in this generation as a black person in America, we're very blessed because we know very well that we could have been <laughs> in the big house, right? In mm -hmm. the slaves, in if slaves or, um, but the fact that we are here, we're blessed, right? And of course, we're still dealing with a lot. We're, we're still getting killed on the streets every day. We're still, but, you know, it's different, right? And I just think about my ancestors and if they were in my position, how would they feel? Mm -hmm. They would they would prioritize pleasure. Like what? I don't have to work in the slave fields anymore. I don't have to do this. So just reframing it, that duality, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's still hard. Yes, we're still, we're drowning, we're burning. Everything is crashing around us, but there's still duality in that. We could still look around and say, okay, the storm is, is gonna pass, it might not pass, it might be here for decades, but in the stillness, once we've grounded and once we are kind of in the moment that you talked about, what can I see around me? What can I notice? And another quote that I have here is, mindfulness is being present to how suffering happens and how either to create more suffering or to alleviate suffering. Mm -hmm. 
So when we think of grounding in the moment and mindfulness practice, it's a it's it's being present in the moment and being present with that suffering. We're all suffering. That's why I'm so grateful for your team meditation because it grounds me. It gives me a mindful moment to be present. Mm -hmm. In that moment, am I going to create more suffering for myself or am I going to alleviate suffering for myself? The duality, the duality, duality and everything. Mm -hmm. It's so true what you're saying because it goes back to the fact of like not like bypassing it either of just yeah. honoring these things have happened these things are like continuing to happen and honoring that they're present and also imagining and reimagining that those possibilities somewhere come a grounded place too and it also feels like when you were sharing too, it's like also an act of revolution to choose to have small moments of joy or pleasure or grounding because it brings you back to yourself and how even those two minutes, five minutes, still are practices bringing you back and knowing like, okay, everything right now might be really chaotic. Everything in depending on our own personal life experiences and circumstances and the world and the chaos that is happening and knowing that like all this is happening and like I'm yeah. the power and in a way <laughs> like all this is happening and we can still ground um and yeah and it's kind of just reminding me to how oh, even being here, I spent a lot of time with trees. Yeah. And how this walking by so many trees, being with trees, or being by the sea has been what I needed to just keep coming back to myself. Um, mm -hmm. And even um, those that I know that aren't able to physically leave the house too, that when I send them those that they're also able to ground again too mm -hmm. even if they're not physically able mm -hmm. to go out mm -hmm. or leave, but they're still able to connect in some way yeah. which really just shows how powerful all of that is mm -hmm. to, um, Do you feel but yeah like what you're saying of like honoring what has happened and knowing that we can still ground and that's really powerful because it brings us back to like we, when we think in that way, it's like honoring and knowing that we have a choice mm -hmm. that we can stay for two, three minutes mm -hmm. before we go back. And even those two, three minutes might be everything we might need yeah. to continue forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And really grounding in what you need and not what other people may think or guilt trip you into doing. If it's two minutes, if it's two days, if that's what yeah. you need do what you need to do, do what you need yeah. to do, but make sure that you're not living in the, the those rose colored glasses, right? You're not constantly mm -hmm. living there. Um, that, was, that was one of the cards that Carol and I um, pulled some cards before. And that was one of the cards that came up is the big house. The big house is the tower in um, my Hoodoo uh, tarot deck. And from the outside, if you walk up to a plantation, right? The, the big house represents the plantation back in slavery times or times, whatever, you know, you know, you know what I mean. <laughs> um, but the big house and looking at it, it's beautiful. Like I've been to some plantations. I've been to some of the worst plantations in America and it's gorgeous. Like the land is beautiful. Like the trees and everything around it, it's gorgeous rose colored glasses I'm if I st stay there and I look around oh my gosh everything is so great everything is so great but once I take off those rose colored glasses I see that people are suffering I see that people are falling I see that the world is crashing behind us so we can't stay there we can't stay there but take what you need because you can't stay here either that's just only going to deplete you and deplete your spirit and again who does that serve 
So honoring the duality in both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, I feel like that was a message in itself, but I do want to pull some cards and um, the card that Carol and I um, pulled before this was longing. And is there anything that you would like to say? Um, your reflection was also beautiful um, too um, on longing. I'll just read this here. Um, I offer my deepest desires. Change me divine beloved into one who offers you my deepest longings, trust and know exactly how to handle them. Let me know my wholeness and freedom most of all. Mm. Anything yeah. come up for you while I shuffle? <laughs> yeah, I feel like there's almost, um, I think in some ways, since I've landed in Ireland and been here for the last month, I feel like I never realized how much I longed for this moment. Mm -hmm. um, and there was an experience within the first week that I was here after my first clinic trip, I had gone to the sea. And um, I know that I'm the first one in my family to, in my immediate family to come back to Ireland because I know that we left during the famine. That's all that I really know. Mm -hmm. um, because it's been like a really big kind of, I don't know, we haven't, we just don't talk about it because uh, there's a lot of grief there. But I know when I was meditating by the sea, um, I just could feel this message of like, he finally made it back. Mm -hmm. and, and once that happened, the sea receded. Mm -hmm. And he went to low tide immediately. And it was just like, I just started crying because it was um, just the volume of what had taken place during that time. Um, and also that the land still knows um, me in this way mm -hmm. and how um, being here like has reminded me of what I've always known but it's different when I guess you're in your own ancestral home yeah. too, um, that you didn't grow up in um, and you don't also like the, like, the Irish language also is has been <laughs> taken away from so many different yeah. areas and they're kind of still is right yeah and it still is because there's only like still talk to areas that are kind of small um areas around different provinces in ireland um but i was realizing you know, the longing that i'm feeling is like the longing to be reconnected to this land mm. and it's made more sense to me that i'm here mm. but i'm also like feeling a lot of grief leaving it too um, in a different way that I've never really understood until I've been here. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing that. I can't, I, I, I've, oh, oh, I can't wait to go back to my land as an adult. I went as a child, mm -hmm. but as an adult, um, there's something that is, um, incubating inside of me <laughs> right now. Not a child for any mm -hmm. friends and family members out there um, that are keep pressuring me to have another one. But I feel like I need to be birthing something and that something that needs to be birthed is from my ancestral land. And so that longing is pulling at my heartstrings now. And just mm -hmm. to see you be there and to see your reflections, um, your joy along with the grief, you know, has been um, something to watch. <laughs> something to watch um and i i thank you for sharing it with me and sharing that with us here and just again longing like longing like what are you longing at this time what are you longing at this time what is calling you back home mm. is it being on the streets and fighting is it retreating back to your heart retreating back to things that bring you joy what is longing you right now? What is calling you right now? Is it maybe researching your ancestral land, your ancestral practices? Um, could it be connecting with the earth? 
than nature? Um, what is longing in you right now? So that's that's a great question to kind of um, start start with. But um, so definitely pulled some cards, and I had a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm just gonna let it flow because I think that was a great segue. Like, what are we longing right now? What is what is calling us back? And um, the center of it is unfolding according to your will. Um, so with this card, and it's a beautiful card. Look, there's two people. <laughs> so um, from this card, I, before I read it, I, I see two, be two beautiful people. And in these times that we're in, right, um, a lot is unfolding for us. Some of, some of us are realizing <laughs> how maybe not the American dream the American dream is. Um, mm -hmm. some of us are, it's being unfolded, the beauty that might have been in our ancestral lands that were taking from us. Um, and that, you know, may have been, um, shown in a, in a not so good light. The beauty that is there is unfolding. Um, connections, people are coming into our space, into our lives that some in our relationships and seeing how those relationships are unfolding and seeing how maybe some of your connections may not be good for your soul right now or may not be good for your heart right now and how you might need to lean in on some other connections that are really resonating with you and your heart right now. Some of those relationships are being unfolded for us. But in all that's being unfolded, mm, stand your ground. Stand your ground, know who you are, and trust that you are supported. That's what I'm really getting here because at first I thought it was two people on the same playing fields, right? On the same level. But then I saw that she's on the top of the mountain. This kind of looks like that fool card, like ready to jump off that cliff, right? But she's not, she, she kind of, she's like, mm -mm, I'm on the top. I'm not ready to drop off. This is not the beginning of my journey. It's kind of like the end. I know I'm yeah. here. Um, I know what I need to do. And I know that I'm divinely supported. I know that I'm supported. I have my friends. I have my communities. I have my ancestors. I got my guides. I got my um, my family to support me. So with all that's being un unfolding for us, as I'm standing my ground, knowing who I am, but also knowing that I can reach out to others for support. I don't have to go at it alone. I don't have to go at it alone. Change me, divine beloved, into one who lets you guide things according to your will. May the highest unfold in many ways. So what's coming up for you with it? I feel like uh, it keeps going back to kind of what we were sharing before. Um, of all of the themes kind of tied together. Of the blessings of us. Um, <laughs> and our worth and actually seeing how that unfolds for us when even if we tell ourselves like I'm worthy what unfolds for us when we say that to ourselves Ooh. When we say that to someone else Ooh. as well because when someone else says that to you that also has an impact as well so it's not just like what we say to ourselves it's also like if someone were to say that to you how would that feel as well as if you were to say that to yourself, what unfolds there, yeah. as well as like looking at the longing, like what are you longing for? Mm. And what unfolds in that? Mm. That could lead to many different things, mm -hmm. um, as well as that can lead to many different types of like internal processing, external processing. Yeah. Uh, more questions. Yeah. Like, ultimately more exploration yeah oh that's so good that's so good <laughs> that's so what good. About you? <laughs> no i mean i i said mine yeah. i i think yeah. i think that's such a beautiful perspective such a beautiful perspective and after what's revealed to us what we've been longing Oh, I just think that's so beautiful. I won't, I won't screw your words because I think I'll just, I'll just might drop it there. I think that was just such a beautiful reflection, such a beautiful reflection. Um, 
And the last two cards really quick here is uncertainty, uncertainty. And I think that's beautiful because th this seems like the new moon, right? So mm -hmm. uncertainty is coming. It's mm -hmm. coming. We got, we're, we're y'all, I've seen the astrology and we're in it for a long haul. Okay. This is just the beginning. This yeah. is just the beginning of what's coming. Um, of, <laughs> this is just the beginning, right? So with what's unfolding and all the certainty around us, let me deeply trust. May I live in a new, it, may I live in the now and relax peacefully into the unfolding, knowing that all the pieces of the puzzle will fall into place at the right time and not a moment before. So what's happening is supposed, no, no, I don't want to say that. What's happening is, um, mm, happening is happening it's happening <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you thank you what's happening is happening and it will happen how it happens mm -hmm. but what are you going to do in that moment when it happens right we talked about some of the um standing your ground i think that's like the theme that like there's just the standing and finding maybe moments of mindfulness, realizing prioritizing pleasure is also a revolution, giving ourselves grace that um, it might show up in different ways. So with all that's uncertain around you, it's, it's happening. It's going mm -hmm. to happen. It will happen. There's been many wars before. There will be many more wars after. Mm -hmm. Healthcare has been screwed up before. Healthcare will probably be screwed up after. With all that's uncertain, where do you stand? And how do you want to show up for yourself first? For yourself first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay, the last thing I'll do um, is just leave the collective um, unless you have anything else to share or you have any other questions, I do have um, my tarot deck here. Um, so we can ask the tarot. Um, if not, I'll just leave the collective with maybe some self-care, um, some self-care, like tips and messages and love. That sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> of course, y'all, this is the perfect time, Okay. Clear your energy. We talked about standing, standing, right? She's, there's nobody else around her. She's her own person. She knows what she needs to do. And right now she's being called to clear her energy. There are so many different things coming at us, especially if you have social media, especially if you have media, period. Um, if you're even in the conversation with everybody, we are taking on those energies. So much energy we don't even realize we're taking on and is attaching to us. Clear some of that energy so that we can think and see clearly. Because when we have other energies attached to us, we can't see and think clearly. We're actually seeing other people's views and other saying other people's thoughts. But I find after a cleanse, like clarity, clarity for my own self and like my own thoughts. And during this time, I've been really kind of um, very mindful about who, what I listen to. Um, I mean, obviously I read, you know, the media and what's going on, but I do it in a safe container. Okay, I'm shielded. I'm protected when I take in the news, okay? Because it's, I don't want that energy to leak into what, what I'm doing and what I'm saying and, and the support that I'm trying to give to other people. And so I think that's really important to um, clear your energy at this time. Mm -hmm. Clear your energy. What's coming up for you? That's really powerful. I think, like what you were saying too, I think only a little bit more of just like using what's happening to be aware and inform what's happened, what you are going to do. Um, but then ultimately also continuing to ground 
because I think it is important to know what is happening because it's gonna event, it's gonna affect you or someone else, and that's also important. And it could also affect people within your community. That you oh, it's very important. Of. We can't be ignorant, y'all. Yeah, exactly. It's we can't like, be ignorant. <laughs> yeah, definitely not. And mm -hmm. it's like knowing, we know where that gets us. Knowing that, knowing what is happening. And also making sure that you're taking care of yourself too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And clearing, we talk about cleansing and clearing a lot, but we don't talk about shielding as much. And I think that's just important, especially in these times. Just protecting and shielding is just protecting your aura, protecting your space. Um, it's it's a shield and not letting anything kind of penetrate your shield. So, like for me, I um, visualize a a purple bubble around me and different spaces that I go and that's an intention that we set for this space is nothing that's not for us or for the highest good of anybody will penetrate and anything that is meant for me will will go ahead and seep on in um, and that's good for me for my highest good but anything that is not gets repelled back and we can shield ourselves with mirrors as well um, mirrors has been coming up a lot for me. So shielding your bubble with mirrors so that whatever evil or whatever negativity is trying to come your way is reflected right back at them, reflected right back at them. Um, so that's important. That's important. And just like two more cards. Um, oh my gosh, which is exactly what we've been talking about. Oh my goodness. Wait till you see this last card. <laughs> then the next card is to take a walk. So take a walk, get out. Maybe after you watch the news, after you take some things in, go out and ground and take a walk. And take a walk. Why? Because the last card is ground yourself, which is something we've been talking about this whole time. <laughs> to ground yourself. And do you see what's coming out of her head? She, look at what's coming out of her head again. Mm -hmm. Is that the lotus? Mm -hmm. All the ickiness and the nastiness the thoughts oh my gosh everything that's around us it, it's 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 horrible right to think of what can happen what will happen what is happening as we speak mm -hmm. right all over the world all mm -hmm. over the world mm -hmm. but when we take a chance to ground ourselves lotus beautiful mm -hmm. beautiful right beautiful yeah. but we need to take that moment to ground plant roots plant roots give that yucky not what you're feeling give that energy to the earth mm -hmm. think the earth before you do it appreciate give gratitude yeah. give it up wow. and let it regenerate <laughs> back to you right sorry go ahead yeah. i know you no, got a lot to say please because no, the trees it was just reminding me too because we just finished our last module for the year mm -hmm. and it was on botany and we were it was discussing how like in like certain stresses on environments, how plants adapt in order to create more habitable conditions for themselves. And um, there was one that was talking about, I can't remember, I think it's like bogs, like if plants get too waterlogged, um, they can't, there's, it creates flexibility. So some plants create have started to create other types of ways to absorb the water. So that way they, their plant or themselves can survive. And so it was kind of reminding me of that, of like a lot of the things that are happening feel almost uninhabitable in our body to go through. And just as plants are trying to find ways to adapt that that grounding is also another adaptation to come back to ourselves in that way. Mm. Yeah, I was just being reminded of that. Mm. I think that might be the caption. Grounding is a way to come back to ourselves. Mm. Grounding is a way to come back to ourselves. So I think that we should leave it at that unless you have any anything. <laughs> Well, this was nourishing for my soul. It was nourishing for me too. I always like listening to your interpretations as well as to see what comes up in my heart. And I love your interpretations as well. I love it as well. 
Maybe there'll be. Oh, go ahead. No, I was like, maybe we should do this again. Let us know if you all want this again. Um, hopefully, it was nourishing for you all. Mm, same. And yeah, I want to thank those that joined us and for anyone who watched this video play as well. Um, that we would love to know your thoughts and yeah. your comments as well. And yeah, let us know what's coming up for you yeah. and how, what are you doing to ground. Please, please, because I know I would love some tips <laughs> on how to go. <laughs> All right. Well, I will chat with you later. Sending everybody so much love and many blessings. New moon blessings. <laughs> See you later.